So progress on the game has been coming along very well. Uh, in about a day's work, I was able to add in a bunch more levels and one cutscene, sort of. Um, it's not really animated, but it's sort of like a, a, a change of atmosphere. You may notice now that there's backgrounds. I made those, and I'll get into what this lavender thing is in a second. Let me fix a bug first. It's supposed to be a sort of like a tractor beam. Unfortunately, I've had to work on the code for this one a little bit. I'm not used to using this sort of coding format, and it's really just uh, you know trial and error to see what sticks and what doesn't. You may notice now that there's also going to be music. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to turn that down a little bit, not because it's copyrighted, but just because I don't want it to overwhelm the video and my audio. So, it's, this part's going to be lagging anyway. <laughs> it always breaks thanks to OBS being super labor intensive. And yikes. Okay, well, it's it's a buggy mess to say the least. Um, it certainly adds an interesting effect. But I'm going to have to see how to fix that. Other than that, in fact, I'm going to delete that right now. I'll figure out something for that in the future. So if we look right now, if we go back to level 5, um, of course this is the one that I took directly from scratch. And once I complete this level, you'll see that the background shifts. So it's only the first five levels, maybe, that have this background. And you can see now we have the new background, and um, Adobe Illustrator does wonders. I love Adobe Illustrator. And I was able to make these great looking backgrounds for these levels. And so the cutscene, very interesting. Um, it's some old artwork that I had lying around that I just didn't know what to do with. Um, so, you know, I went into Adobe Illustrator and made this quick sign here. And here's the cutscene I'll let you see for yourself. I like the spooky wind sound effect. Makes, and I made the player smaller so you sort of get this feeling of scale under this giant tower. I like the cloud effects, uh, gradients. In Adobe Illustrator, you can mess with the opacity of gradients. You can make some great clouds. And, of course, here's stage number three. What I love about this stage is that you can see where you just were in the background, and I love the effect on the cliff. I think it looked really great. And teleporters. I now have teleporters in the game. And I died. <laughs> And immediately tabbed out. I guess you could say I accidentally rage quit. That's the current state of the game. Um, you know, I have to figure out something. In fact, I'm going to see if I can do it right here. So I have this code that I made for conveyor belts. If you see, they, they push you along, right? So I thought maybe I could just borrow the code from this one, right, you know, this is the same thing as that one, except instead of going horizontal, it's going vertical. So, you know, I uh, put in the condition, change the object, and, you know, I edit. Um, I think negative is right, maybe? I'm not sure. So I'm going to have to delete that since, of course, we're trying to change the Y coordinate. And so it's going to be Y active, because that's the name of the player. Let's check if minus 5 does the trick. Assuming, of course, that this all works. You can see that this level is definitely not finished. Yeah, see, it does that weird bouncing thing. And I'm not exactly sure why. But who doesn't love bug fixing? Well, the code lines up. Uh, 
I'm not exactly sure what the problem is. It does that weird bouncing move. I might just scrap it all together. In fact, that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to remove this and make sort of a staircase thing that the player has to juggle behind. And then I'm going to make it so that this huge lava pit is lower down. So, like, the player has to, like, jump here. And then I'm going to have to extend it. I'm going to move all of these over one. Like this. And I'm gonna have to delete all of these. This is the part of video games people don't talk about. is the parts where you're just thinking, oh, what can I cut? <laughs> Staircases are not the easiest thing to make because the player has to like fit through them and I have to test like all of the gaps to make sure, and what doesn't help is the architecture of this level. It's fairly restrictive with uh, this tight corridor, and I don't frankly mind it. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna work. I just need to make sure that uh, I use the same pattern over again. That should be fine. And this time I'm gonna be smart. I'm gonna move the player back over here so we can test it out. Yep, that works good enough for me. Um, you know, obviously if I spent more time, I could probably get it to be absolutely perfect. But if there's something that I've learned from, whether it's anything that I do, because I like to write, you know, I do lots of writing. Uh, one of the works I'm currently working on is over 11,000 words. Um, you know, when I'm writing, when I'm making a game, when I'm making art, I've learned that you shouldn't question yourself. I'm not saying that you shouldn't edit yourself. Editing and self-criticism is a very good thing. What I'm saying, though, is, is that you shouldn't nitpick yourself over every single little detail while you're making something because then you're never going to feel satisfied with what you're making. You're never going to feel satisfied with any of your projects because you're always telling yourself about how awful it is before it's even had the chance to be good. And I think that that's a huge problem sometimes with the creative process, which is something that I love to talk about, the creative process, even though it's sort of a buzzword. Um, I think this is the first level where the goal isn't going to be tiny or the same size. I like this idea of having the lava pits on either side of the goal that the player has to fall into. Okay, that works. That works for me. And we're going to finish up this level by making a barrier so the players can't uh, leap forwards, you know, too, too far. I never want my game to feel restricting, but also sometimes you have to put the foot down on the player and say, you know, I can't allow you to break my game. Of course, we're going to move the player back, probably here. Oh, I could I could put it back here and be evil. Yeah, we're going to have to be evil on this one. We're going to put that back here. And that was just another little look into where the game is currently at. And how I make some more of these more complicated levels. Though I never like the first level of a stage to be super complicated. I like the player to get a little taste of uh, what's to come. Get a feel for the background, the new theme. You know, level uh, 15... This is a very unique level for the game. You know, we've never seen these triangle ones before. A uh, unique sort of dungeon-like architecture in this area. And in level 14, we had, you know, the conveyor belts and the teleporters and uh, this stupid thing right here, which, you know, I won't give it away. You can play the game and figure it out. 